Good morning, and welcome to the worship for the second Sunday of Easter. Alleluia! Christ is risen. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Glory to God in the highest, and peace to his people on earth. Lord God, heavenly King, almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy upon us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, receive our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Almighty and everlasting God, who in the Paschal mystery established the new covenant of reconciliation, grant that all who have been reborn into the fellowship of Christ's body may show forth in their lives what they profess by their faith, through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Our first reading is from the Acts of the Apostles, beginning in the fourth chapter. Now, the whole group of those who believed were of one heart and soul, and no one claimed private ownership of any possessions but everything they owned was held in common. With great power, the apostles gave their testimony to the resurrection of the Lord Jesus, and great grace was upon them all. There was not a needy person among them, for as many as owned lands or houses sold them and brought the proceeds of what was sold. They laid it at the apostles' feet, and it was distributed to each as, they, as any had need. The word of the Lord. Our psalm today is Psalm 133. Oh, how good and pleasant it is when brethren live together in unity. It is like fine oil upon the head that runs down upon the beard, upon the beard of Aaron, and runs down upon the collar of his robe. It is like the dew of Hermon that falls upon the hills of Zion. For there the Lord has ordained the blessing, life, forevermore. Our second reading today comes from the first letter of John, beginning in the first chapter. We declare to you what was from the beginning, what we have heard and what we have seen with our own eyes, what we have looked at and touched with our own hands concerning the word of life. This life was revealed and we have seen it and testified to it and declared to you the eternal life that was with the Father and was revealed to us. We declare to you what we have seen and heard so that you also may have fellowship with us. And truly our fellowship is with the Father and with his Son, Jesus Christ. We are writing these things so that our joy may com be complete. This is the message we have heard from him and proclaim to you that God is light and in him there is no darkness at all. If we say that we have fellowship with him while we are walking in darkness, we lie and we do not do what is true. But if we walk in the light as he himself is in the light, we have fellowship with one another. And the blood of Jesus, his son, cleanses us all from sin. If we say that we have no sin, we deceive ourselves. And the truth is not in us. If we confess our sins, he who is faithful and just will forgive us our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. If we say that we have not sinned, we make him a liar. And his word is not in us. My little children... I am writing these things to you so that you may not sin. But if anyone does sin, 
we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ, the righteous. And he is the atoning sacrifice for our sins, and not for ours only, but also for the sins of the whole world. The word of the Lord. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to John. When it was evening of the day of resurrection, the first day of the week, and the doors of the house where the disciples had met were locked for fear of the Jews, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. After he said this, he showed them his hands and his side. Then his disciples rejoiced when they saw the Lord. Jesus said to them again, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, so I send you. When he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive the sins of any, they are forgiven them. If you retain the sins of any, they are retained. But Thomas, who was called the twin, one of the twelve, was not with them when Jesus came. So the other disciples told him, We have seen the Lord. But he said to them, Unless I see the mark of the nails in his hands and put my finger in the mark of the nails and my hands in his side, I will not believe. A week later, his disciples were again in the house, and Thomas was with them. Although the doors were shut, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, Put your finger here and see my hands. Reach out your hand and put it in my side. Do not doubt, but believe. Thomas answered him, My Lord and my God. Jesus said to him, have you believed because you've seen me? Blessed are those who have not seen and yet have come to believe. Now Jesus did many other signs in his presence, in the presence of his disciples, which are not written in this book. But these are written so that you may come to believe that Jesus is the Messiah, the Son of God, and that through believing you may have life in his name. The Gospel of the Lord. Good morning and happy Easter. So doubting Thomas gets a lot of flack. He gets a lot of flack. Why couldn't he just believe? What a terrible person. He was a follower of Jesus. But you know, I kind of like doubting Thomas. I like the skeptical mind who's not just going to drink the Kool-Aid. I really appreciate someone who says, you know, I've got to have my own experience of this. I'm not just going to take your word for it. It's too important. I really appreciate that. I appreciate the people who want to go read the research. I appreciate the people who second guess the political spin. They may agree with me. They may disagree with me, but I appreciate their mindset. Belief is nice, but testing and verification is also quite good. And to be honest, if I were Thomas, I'm not sure I would have believed them either. Think of it this way. So the week, I'm sorry, not the week, the the day that Jesus is resurrected, it's the day after the Jewish Holy Day, so it is presumably a Sunday. <sighs> Most of Jesus' disciples are in a house with the doors locked. Now, this is not a time where you everybody locks their doors. But they're in a house, the doors are locked for fear of the Gospel of John says the Jews, but it's really the Jewish authorities. It's their own authorities. It's for fear of the temple police. It's for fear that they too are going to get arrested. They are huddled and terrified and fearful. And Thomas is not among them. Thomas is somewhere else. We don't get to know where he was. 
We don't get to know why, but I sometimes wonder if it's not perhaps an important little point that Thomas was not hiding. He was not hiding in a locked house with the other disciples who were afraid. He was living his life. He was doing his thing. And when he meets the rest of Jesus' students, the terrified ones, they're babbling with crazy language. They're, they're saying strange and weird things, and they're claiming to have seen Jesus. These were the terrified ones. The ones who couldn't manage to get on with the rest of life because they were so afraid they were going to be arrested. And he's dubious. And he says, yeah, I'll believe it when I see it. And he gets to see it. And you know, some people over the years have read Jesus' comments to him as a really stern rebuke. But you know, We've seen what really stern rebuke looks like in the language of Jesus. He says things like, get thee behind me, Satan. That is a stern rebuke. He doesn't rebuke Thomas. He offers him the proof that he needs. That's the first thing he does. He says, look at my hands. Put your hand in my side believe. And, you know, Thomas has a really huge reaction. My Lord and my God. And Jesus asks him in a rather gentle fashion, do you believe now because you've seen? Blessed are those who believe without seeing. He's not saying Thomas isn't blessed. He's saying that Thomas is privileged to be able to base his belief on what his eyes tell him. And blessed are those who do not have that privilege. Blessed are you and I. Amen. Our service continues with the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father, through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Almighty God, during this time of social distancing and self-quarantine, we ask that you remind us of our deep connection with one another. Help us to reach out in love and safe ways to the sick, the friendless, and the needy. Fill our hearts with compassion for those who must work with others and risk exposure, for those who need to work but cannot, for those juggling childcare and working from home, for those who have been infected by coronavirus, for all those who are suffering and in pain from other illnesses, we pray that they may be made well and whole once more. For all those who have died, 
for those filled with hope and those filled with despair, for those whose faith was clear and for those whose faith is known to you alone. We pray that they may rest in peace. We pray for our nation and for all those in authority, the president, the governor, our county executives, our local leaders, and the CDC, that they may make wise decisions and have right actions for the welfare and benefit of us all. We pray for Trinity Church, for Sarah, Michael, and Rose, for Andy, Joanne, and Bruce, for Linda and Ernie, for Joan, Matthew, and Lynn, for, Jay, for Michelle, JJ, Alana, and Mariah, for Bob, Bonnie, Louise, Ted, and Reggie, for Lorraine, Deb, Rich, Linda, Lena, Freya, Parker, Jackson, Jocelyn, Jordan, Chris, Colin, and Kelly, for Kathy and Joanne, for Chris and Judy, for Walter and Jane. We pray for our families, friends, and neighbors, especially Holy Apostles Perry and St. Luke's Attica, for our local churches here in Warsaw, and for Jamie, Pam, David, James and Barb D, Anne, George, Phil, Steve W, Bob M, Kathy and Michelle, and those others that you may name now. We pray for all those in the military and for those in the National Guard who have been mobilized for the safety and welfare of our nation. And especially we pray for Robert. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Alleluia, alleluia.